Hello, this is Donna Lewis, and today we're going to talk about what to do if you have a skunk under your shed or deck. First, you're probably going to freak out a little bit because they stink a little bit, right? But I'm gonna talk about some best things to do so that maybe you can live a little bit peacefully with the skunk and the skunk can raise her baby safely. So, first of all, remember, skunks are a native species. They're here for a reason and they're here one of the things they do is really help us out. It's really cool to watch these guys. Um, they're one of my favorites. I know they're stinky, but they are one of my favorites. And I mean, look at the markings, you know? It's really cool. This is a warning to predators to stay away, this black and white coloring. So this lets predators know they should not mess with this animal. Not always a clear sign for your dogs. They just won't listen. But wild predators know better. Now, Another thing, when you have one of these guys under your deck, you probably have some of these real little tiny babies, actually with not even this fuzzy fur yet, but they still have this coloring. They're super adorable. She's just trying to raise her babies, all right? So always assume that between the months of April to September, they have babies under that deck or shed or barn or wherever they're at. They're not going to cause a bunch of damage. They're not gonna cause you a bunch of issues except some smell now and then. But honestly, while they're raising their young, there's not a whole lot of smell going on unless she has to protect her young. So, you don't want to orphan the baby skunks, all right? So we have to try to think of humane things to do so that we're not leaving these babies abandoned. Then you've got a problem with, you have babies with no mom, what do you do? There's not a lot of rehabbers out there that take care of skunks and people are super busy with other babies that they've gotten. Now, the mother skunk will move her babies to a new den site if she's frightened. So there is ways, there are ways to get her to move if you absolutely think you need to do that. Those babies will leave by the end of summer or about 10 weeks, okay? So the best thing to do is to not trap them, okay, and to move and not move them because you're probably moving them away from babies and then you have abandoned babies like this with no mom, all right? So we don't want to do that. Um, let's be humane. So we want to use humane harassment. Okay, humane harassment to get mom to move. The best thing to do, the best thing to do in this situation is to just be patient with mom and give her time to raise her young, all right? So, number one, best thing to do is to do nothing at all. This is what I try to get people to do when they call. Do nothing at all, okay? Just wait, be a little patient. Sometimes as humans, we are very impatient. We want things a certain way. We don't want this animal messing with our lives, okay? But they've lost a lot of habitat and a lot of our native species live in our backyards, under our sheds, in our trees, um, in little burrows in the ground in our yard. So that's where they live a lot of times. They don't have other spaces. So the best thing to do, you wanna wait for the babies to be grown and gone from the den, okay? Babies start leaving with mom to forage at about six weeks and again, gone by about 10 weeks. It's not really that long in the grand scheme of things, correct? So, um, wait until they're independent. So, that's the easiest thing for you to do, is to just wait. Deal with a little bit of smell here and there. I mean, that's the worst things that skunks usually do that, to drive us nuts, is their smell. Otherwise, they're very beneficial. They eat a ton of grubs and other things that we don't want in our yard. They dig with these good claws and eat a bunch of grubs. They can sniff them out. Eyesight is not the best, but boy, did they have a good sniffer, okay? So, my best advice, no, do nothing at all. Second, use light, okay? So if you wanna get them to move, this is one of the things you can do. You want to attack all of the senses, so to speak, to get animals to move. So place a bright light outside of the den entrance that is fire safe. You don't wanna start a fire. Skunks are nocturnal, so they don't like that light. Okay, that's annoying to them. Now, uh, number three, so do nothing, or then you can use light. Three, you can use sound, okay? Sound can be very annoying. They want a dark, quiet place. That's why they picked your deck, under your deck or your den. So play a radio with a talk station, not, a radio, not music. Music doesn't really bother them. 
Um, but humans talking can frighten them, okay? The sound of that is, is, is threatening to them. So that's another thing you can do is sound. Another thing you can do is um, bother them with smell. You're like, they bother me with their smell. I know, but they don't like certain smells. So if you soak some rags in some um, cider vinegar or ammonia, rags or paper, paper towels, put it in a Ziploc bag, poke some holes in that bag so that they can smell it, and hang it near the entrance. You can also use dirty cat litter. If you have a cat, you have plenty of that, right? They don't like those smells, okay? It makes them uncomfortable. So this takes patience and persistence. Again, you have to tack all the senses, so you're gonna use that light, sound, and smell if you want to harass them to get them to move. Keep all of that going for at least three days and nights. Then to see if the skunk has left, you're going to get some balled up newspaper, put in that den entrance, and leave it for three days and nights, okay? If that paper is still in place, mom has probably moved her skunks, okay? If not, you could try again or again decide to leave them alone if you could do that. Um, then if they're gone, you can temporarily patch the hole with a fourth inch wire mesh. Now, there's some other great ideas you can get out on some websites. You wanna make sure they're websites you should be listening to, you know, check a couple websites. But to humanely get skunks to move and other wildlife to move, you can go to torontowildlifecenter.com. I use that for a lot of great information when I just wanna make sure that I'm correct or check myself. I go to the Humane Society, a Toronto Wildlife Center, um, some other reputable sites to check myself out to see if I'm right. And another thing to remember that trapping the skunk is never the best option, okay? Raccoon, skunk, groundhog. The babies will be abandoned, which is super sad, especially to somebody like me. And to most of it, most of us it is. Um, and if you vac have that spot vacated, you you kill the animal, which I highly against, um, or you trap it, you're just making a space for another animal that can move in that might cause you more issues. So that's something to remember. So just um, you know, leave the leave the skunk alone. Harass it a bit with some humane methods, um, and hopefully you can get that animal to move. But trapping is never my recommendation. Now, if you have any questions, you can email me at dlewis at clarkcountyparks.org. You can also get on some other great websites for some great advice. So thank you so much. I appreciate your time. See you next time. Bye-bye.